What is up, everybody? JT Dangerous here once again. I am here to do my Money in the Bank 2020 predictions. Now, Money in the Bank happens this Sunday, live and exclusively on the WWE Network. Now, Money in the Bank has always been one of my favorite pay-per-views as a WWE fan, and this year's card is pretty stacked from top to bottom. Now, as of right now, we have five big matches. Three big titles are going to be on the line, and there's going to be two of the most unique Money in the Bank ladder matches in WWE history. So I am extremely excited to do my Money in the Bank predictions for you guys this year. It's great to be back recording for you guys. Hope everybody is staying safe during this coronavirus pandemic that's sweeping the world, and I hope you guys do enjoy. Now, our record coming into Money in the Bank this year after our last WWE pay-per-view, which was the Royal Rumble back in January, we went a perfect Eight no. So our overall record coming in is 214, 103, and 1. So we're coming in hot, and I'm looking to keep it that way. So hoping this video we will continue the winning ways. We're on a three pay-per-view winning streak. Hoping this video we make it four. Hopefully. And hope you guys be able to watch this video and all the videos that I put up on my channel. As always, show your support on the channel as always by watching these videos, super kicking those like buttons, and that notification bell, commenting your picks and your opinions in the comment sections down below. Now, this is your first time watching my channel today, guys. As a first time viewer, and this is your first video. Boy, you're to go in if you're a huge fan of the WWE like myself and you're ready for this year's Money in the Bank. Welcome to the Dangerous Alliance. I'm JT Dangerous and welcome to the club because this club is. Two. Woo, woo, again, thank you guys so very much. Now, other than that, let's get right into these predictions. Now, if they do add any other matches to this card, which they probably will, or if there's any last minute changes, I'll have them all in the comment section down below. But I'm going to do the five big matches that have already been determined. Let's start off with the first matchup. It is the women's Money in the Bank ladder match to see who will have a guaranteed shot at either the Raw Women's Champion, the man Becky Lynch, or the SmackDown Women's Champion, Bayley. Starting off with the competitors. First, she is making her debut in the Money in the Bank ladder match. She is a former NXT Champion, a former SmackDown Women's Champion, and a former... A former uh, former SmackDown Women's Tag Team Champion. She is one half of the Kabuki Warriors and the Empress of Tomorrow. She is Asuka. Next, she is also making her Money in the Bank ladder match debut and she is the former and the very first two-time NXT Women's Champion. She is the Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler. Next, she is also making her debut in the Money in the Bank ladder match this year. She is the former Raw Women's Champion, and she is easily the most unsafe worker in the WWE. She is the irresistible force, Nia Jax. Next, she is making only her second Money in the Bank ladder match appearance. She is Dana Brooke. Next, she is making her Money in the Bank ladder match debut. She is the sassy Southern Bill and the Marine Mom herself, Lacey Evans. And finally, she is making her fourth. Money in the Bank ladder match appearance, and she won the very first women's Money in the Bank ladder match in 2018 and cashed that in to become the SmackDown Women's Champion. She is Carmella. Now, when I said that these two Money in the Bank ladder matches are going to be unique and a first for the WWE, it's definitely saying that because for the first time ever, both the men's and the women's Money in the Bank ladder match are going to happen simultaneously. And it's not going to happen at a performance center, it's going to happen at WWE Headquarters, you know, Titan Towers in Stamford, Connecticut. It's going to start at the ground floor of WWE Headquarters. And the main goal for both the men's and the women is to get to the roof and grab the briefcase. So when they say climbing the corporate ladder, they mean it literally and figuratively. Now looking at the field for the women's side, you have a lot of first-timers like Oscar, like Shayna Baszler, like Nia, like Lacey. You have a, a woman that's been already in it and Dana Brooke and you have a past winner of the Money in the Bank ladder match in Carmella who has the most experience out of the five. So this matchup is definitely big and whoever wins this is going to have a like almost a guaranteed shot at either the Raw Women's Champion or the SmackDown Women's Champion whenever they won, anytime, anywhere for up to a year. So coming from me, in the Women's Money in the Bank ladder match, my three picks to win are the Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler, Lacey Evans, and my wild card pick, Asuka. And now the next matchup. It is for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Starting off with the challenger. She is looking to finally win her first singles title in the WWE. She is Tamina. And Tamina is challenging the longest reigning 
and defending two-time SmackDown Women's Champion, she is Bayley. Now, Tamina earned this opportunity at the SmackDown Women's Championship by defeating Bayley's best friend Sasha Banks on SmackDown a couple weeks ago, and this is a golden opportunity for the second generation star, because here's a crazy dangerous fact. The last time Tamina was in a any type of a Women's Championship match one-on-one, -on -one, you gotta go all the way back to Extreme Rules back in 2014 when she challenged then Divas Champion Paige. So Tamina's been waiting six years for a one-on-one -on -one shot at any any women's championship and she's looking to seize the opportunity. There is idea of Bayley looking to continue her longest reign as the SmackDown Women's Champion and this pay-per-view was really good to her last year when she cashed in her Money in the Bank briefcase to become the SmackDown Women's Ch uh, Women's Champion and achieve the Grand Slam when it comes to women's wrestling in the WWE. And she's looking to take down another challenger because Bayley is taking on all comers and we're still waiting for that one-on-one -on -one match which I'm really hoping happens between Sasha Banks and Bayley possibly at SummerSlam in Boston in Sasha's hometown. So if anyone's going to beat Bailey, it's going to be her best friend Sasha. Let's just get that out of the way. So coming from me in this matchup for the SmackDown Women's Championship, Tamina's chances are as slim as a slim gym. Ooh, yeah! So coming from me, I am going to go with Bailey to retain the SmackDown Women's Championship by any means and defeat Tamina. And now the next matchup. It is for the Universal Championship. Starting off with the challenger. He is the former Universal Champion looking to regain the gold that he should have never lost in the first place. He is the Fiend Bray Wyatt. And Bray Wyatt is challenging the reigning and defending Universal Champion, the monster among men, Braun Strowman. Now this, this matchup has a lot of history to it because it was Bray Wyatt who brought Braun Strowman to the WWE back in 2014 as the black sheep of the Wyatt family. And it seems like this match has come full circle, but this time it's for the biggest prize, the Universal Championship. Now starting off with Brave Wyatt, this is his opportunity to right the biggest wrong that they did to his character uh, in the WWE. We all know what happened at Super Showdown between him and Goldberg, Goldberg winning the belt. But we found out what really happened is that Goldberg used his creative control card to say that I I'm not going to take a I'm not going to take an L to Bray Wyatt because it would tarnish my legacy with the kids. Really Goldberg, you're going to pull that creative control card? Oh, I refuse to lose because it would tarnish my legacy with the kids. Goldberg, nobody even no kids going to who no, don't even know who you are and you're going to bring bring that up and not give the fiend that rub and yet you and just it was so stupid when I heard that I was just like, wow, Goldberg pulled the Hogan Oh, I, I'm, I refuse to lose to this guy because it would tarnish my legacy. Like, really, Goldberg? Like, get the fuck out of here. Be and we all saw what, what happened, Bray Wyatt losing the belt and losing all that mystique because you can't get that mystique back. You lost to a 50-plus-year-old guy. Yes, he got, a, he got a win back at WrestleMania against John Cena in that Firefly Funhouse match, which was just crazy, but lose... that. The, him being beat by Goldberg really hurt that mystique of the Fiend. And now this is his best chance to right the biggest wrong, to regain the title he should have never lost in the first place. There is idea of Braun Strowman looking to start his first reign as the Universal Champion. Strowman, who replaced Roman Reigns uh, against Goldberg at WrestleMania, went on to win the Universal title. So let's be honest here, if Roman Reigns was able to wrestle, he would have been Universal Champion. But he chose his career, he chose his health over the title, which I gave a lot of respect to him. And the fact that Braun Strowman won the match, and after what he said about indie wrestlers during this pandemic, to look for look for a job, you're not going to find anything being an indie wrestler. And then he apologized. He was real sorry about saying that. And then Vinnie Mac just gives him the title after they tried to do it for three years and, th and they didn't want to do it. And now they're doing it now. It just, just feels very stupid. And I'll say it again. If they did this in 2017 when Braun was the hottest, this would have been amazing. But they did this move three years too late. And honestly, Braun Strowman is just the placeholder for Roman Reigns. As soon as Roman Reigns comes back, that title belongs to him. Because he should have been the Universal Champion, not Braun Strowman. As much as I love Braun, Braun was cool back three years ago. He ain't cool now. He's a piece of shit if you ask me. So coming from me in this huge matchup for the Universal Championship... This one's tough because I want to pick Bray Wyatt, but knowing WWE, they're not going to have Braun Strowman lose 
in his first title defense. I just don't see it. And so coming from me, as much as I hate this, I am going to go with Braun Strowman to retain the Universal Championship by any means and defeat Bray Wyatt. Ugh. And now the next matchup. It is the men's Money in the Bank ladder match to see who will have a guaranteed shot at either the WWE Champion, Drew McIntyre, or the Universal Champion, Braun Strowman. Starting off with the competitors. First, he is making his first Money in the Bank ladder match appearance, and he is the former NXT Champion. He is the Prince of Darkness, Aleister Black. Next, he is also making his debut in the Money in the Bank ladder match. He is one half of Heavy Machinery. He is Otis. Next, he is making only his second Money in the Bank ladder match appearance, and he is a Grand Slam winner in the WWE, the master of the 619. He is Rey Mysterio. Next, he is making his third Money in the Bank ladder match appearance, and he won the 2017 Money in the Bank ladder match and unsuccessfully cashed it in on then WWE champion Jinder Mahal. He is the 2019 King of the Ring. He is King Baron Corbin. Next, you have another a person, you have another man who's making his third Money in the Bank ladder match appearance, and he won the 2011 Money in the Bank ladder match to cash in and become world champion. He is the leader of the Yes movement. He is Daniel Bryan. Now, originally, Apollo Crews was supposed to be the sixth man in this Money in the Bank ladder match, but with his injury, he's sustained last week on Raw. WWE had no choice but to take him out. So, to determine the sixth competitor in the Money in the Bank ladder match for the men, they will have a last chance gauntlet match on Raw this Monday to fill that spot. Now, I've heard some names that could be in it, like Jinder Mahal, which one of my good friends, the Elitist, is actually guaranteeing he's going to win that match win Money in the Bank, and cash in to become a two-time WWE Champion. But I've heard a huge rumor that the man who, let's be honest here, stole the show at WrestleMania Night 1 against The Undertaker, the phenomenal AJ Styles, could be in that match and he could win it. So there's a lot of possibility on that sixth and final spot on Monday night. But looking at the field right now with the five, you got a lot of newcomers like uh, Aleister Black and Otis, you may have Jinder Mahal in there. You could have AJ Styles there making their first, uh, making their Money in the Bank ladder match appearance. You got Rey Mysterio, who's only been in two, but you have two former winners, King Corbin and Daniel Bryan. So they know how to win this matchup. But the way this matchup is set, like you start at head, you start at the bottom of head, WWE headquarters, and you have to fight your way to the top of the roof. So the uniqueness of these two Money in the Bank ladder matches are definite. So, coming from me, in the men's Money in the Bank ladder match to see who have a guaranteed shot at the WWE Champion or the Universal Champion, my three picks to win are Aleister Black, King Baron Corbin, and whoever wins that gauntlet match on Raw this Monday. And now, the main event. It is for the WWE Championship. Starting off with the challenger. He is the former and very first NXT champion, the former Ring of Honor world champion, the former two-time Intercontinental champion, the former two-time Universal champion, and he's looking to become a three-time WWE champion. He is the Monday Night Messiah. He is Seth freaking Rollins. And Seth Rollins is challenging the reigning and defending and the very first Scottish-born WWE Champion, he is the Chosen One, Drew McIntyre. Now this is only the second one-on-one -on -one meeting between Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre. McIntyre won the last meeting on September 7th of 2018 on Monday Night Raw. So this is the much-anticipated rematch, but it's for so much more the WWE Championship. Now starting off with Seth Rollins first, this is a big opportunity, a chance to once again be the WWE Champion, and it has been a very long time since Rollins has been in the title picture. Here's a dangerous fact. The last time Seth Rollins was in the WWE title picture, you got to go all the way back to 2016 at this very event in Las Vegas where he Seth Rollins came back from the knee injury he suffered in 2015, came back, won the WWE title from Roman Reigns, and then we all know what happened. Uh, we know what happened after the match. Dean Ambrose, who won the Money in the Bank ladder match, uh, later in the evening cashed in and became WWE champion. So Seth Rollins has not been in the WWE title picture for about four years, and this is his chance to regain the title, and with his new moniker as the Monday Night Messiah, he's looking to become the Messiah of the Raw, uh, Raw division as the WWE Champion. 
There is IDF Drew McIntyre, who is making his first title defense after winning the WWE title for the first time in his long tenured career, defeating Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania, and then also beating the Big Show uh, uh, the, at WrestleMania as well. And if anyone deserved to be WWE champion, it was Drew McIntyre. For a man who has busted his ass, where I was watching him back in 2009 as the chosen one, chosen by Mr. McMahon to become champion, then being, seeing him be 3MB, and then him leaving to go to TNA, win the TNA world title, come back to the WWE, win the NXT title, then become Shane McMahon's lackey, and now he's then winning the Rumble in, uh, in January to be in WWE champion. So if anyone deserved to be WWE champion, it was Drew McIntyre. And this is a pretty stiff title, the first title defense for uh, the chosen one because last year Seth Rollins and AJ Styles tore the roof out of uh, tore the roof uh, at Money in the Bank last year. So this one's definitely gonna uh, definitely I'm excited to see if this one can live up to that one. So coming from me in the main event match for the WWE Championship. It's the Curb Stomp versus the Claymore. It's the Monday Night Messiah versus the Chosen One. <sighs> this one's tough, but coming from me, as much as I love Seth Rollins, I'm going to go with Drew McIntyre to retain the WWE Championship by any means and defeat the Monday Night Messiah, Seth Rollins, in a banger. And those are my Money in the Bank 2020 predictions. Now, I want to thank you guys so very much for watching this video today. Comment below. Who do you have winning this huge matchup for the WWE title between Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre? Who do you see walking out the Universal Champion between The Fiend and Braun Strowman? And who do you see winning the men's and women's Money in the Bank ladder match? Let me know in the comment section below your picks. And let me know, what is your favorite Money in the Bank moment and favorite cash? And for me, it's definitely Seth Rollins at WrestleMania 31. I would say Edges was great. CM Punk's were great. And Dolph Ziggler's were great. But let me know what you guys think. Let's have a conversation about it. Of course, I'm always on to see your comment. Like it and, of course, reply right back to me. Because comments are absolutely always welcome on this channel. And I do want to thank you guys so very much for watching this video today. Now, before you guys go, as always, you guys can never forget to do this. That like button, comment, share with your friends. Of course, super kick that like button like only you guys can. Of course, you guys can never forget to do this as well. That subscribe button become part of this bigger and dangerous, dangerous alliance. And I will see you guys hopefully in a couple weeks for my official AEW Double or Nothing 2 2020 predictions. Later days, guys. Stay safe and peace.